Hi everyone out there on YouTube and welcome back to Truth For Real Truth Audio. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited. Venom Thang X finally uploaded his uh, new series entitled... Do you remember uh, back in... Uh, I think it's... What part was it? Um, uh, one of the latter parts of uh, his first series, Satan Invented Evolution, like 4, 5, or 6, where he decides to say, Hey, uh, I, I felt like renaming my series Satan Wants to Make a Monkey Out of You. Oh, maybe I'll do that for my next series. Well, he finally put that series up, and he started with part one, but he renames it Evolution Wants to Make a Monkey Out of You, part one. So I'm so excited. Let's get started right off the bat, because it's uh, an 11-minute video, like it's typical, and uh, it's uh, multiple parts, so let's get started. time ago, sure. You know, some people, when I ask that, their brain just shuts off. It goes, la la la, can't hear, I plug my other... Actually, I think it would be the other way around for many creationists. Ear, ...but my other hand is kind of occupied. Um, but they just, you know, they plug their ears, they close their eyes, and they go, evolution's true, evolution's true, evolution's true, and they... Re I've never heard any evolutionist ever do that. ...refuse to think outside their little box. What if evolution's not true? What are the implications of that? So... For me, not much. While you're sure like, if creationism is actually true, it wouldn't affect my beliefs at all. On that, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Venom Fang X. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is the first time you're joining us, we like to talk about the evolution creationist controversy because we here believe that God created the heavens and the earth, as the Bible says. We believe the Bible is the inspired, inerrant word of the living God, and that evolution theory is one of the greatest and most dangerous lies ever given to mankind. So, we're going to show you here in this video, and videos to follow, so stay tuned, that the evolution theory is not based upon scientific evidence, but rather on lies upon lies upon more lies. So, and I'll be refuting every single one of his claims. We're going to be flipping through textbooks and showing you what the evolutionists are saying and showing you that they're absolutely wrong and ridiculous and they're dishonest. They know what they're saying is not true. It's uh, no. Most evolutionists, uh, the reason, I mean, why would an evolutionist believe in evolution unless it's true? I mean, I came to evolution, I, I believe in evolution, theistic evolution, because I used to be creationist, Sean. I, I became a theistic evolutionist. Why? Because of the facts. Okay, I desperately didn't want it to be true. But truth for real truth, I want the truth out there. So, yeah. Just going back to what I said before, they will not entertain the idea that what they're saying is not true because the alternative, which is God created the heavens there, scares them too much. It uh, doesn't scare me at all because uh, I technically kind of believe that. It's too big of a concept for many people. So I'm trying to bring you, if you are an evolutionist, I want to bring you outside your comfort zone uh, I'm going to show you that what you believe is not only wrong, uh, but that what I'm saying is right. All right, I'd love to see the evidence for that. So let's get right into this, starting from the beginning. Uh, Charles Darwin went upon the bugle on the high seas, and he went to the Galapagos Islands, and what did he see there but a bunch of finches? And those finches, he noted, had a whole bunch of different beak sizes. These are called... Yes, and other different features, sure. Darwin's finches. Darwin's finches, you can look them up. So Darwin looked at a whole bunch of finches, and you know what he said? He looked at them and he said, hmm, this is amazing. All these finches must share a common ancestor, but they show distinct qualities in their beak. Yeah. Each one has a different sized beak. So for whatever reason, uh, Charles Darwin stipulated that because these finches have different sized beaks, that the bananas and the birds must be 
interrelated and have a common ancestor. Did you say that? I'm not sure. Uh, the reason he looked at the finches like that was because th I'll, I'll think about it. All, all the finches uh, kind of like evolved, uh, kind of a natural selection. Some of the the, the ones with smaller beaks kind of died off, and the ones with the larger beaks could survive. And they uh, it's it's process of natural selection, Sean. And they got like bigger and bigger and better and better, and that's when, what natural selection does. Now that's a stretch, and I'll tell you why. If I see a bunch of birds with different sized beaks, it reminds me of a different, you know, a different arm size of someone's siblings. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I bet you're probably taller or shorter than them. If you compare... Sure, but, uh, you know, that's just the start of evolution, Sean. compare your arm size, you might have a different sized arm. So, does that prove that you evolved from an earthworm? Who says that? It's just a one stage of evolution, Sean. No. All that proves is that when people breed, or when animals breed, their offspring come in all shapes and sizes. So Sure, that's what you'd call microevolution. Is it possible that God designed life with the ability to create offspring with varying sizes? Yes. So what Darwin saw is not evidence of evolution. It can be equally used as evidence for creation, that God designed the finches with the ability to change the size of their beaks. Uh, well, why would he create uh, a finch that couldn't survive first? Why would he create uh, the bir a finch that uh, that a finch that really finch that really couldn't shoot that couldn't survive? Why did why did he have to create more? So, what create it so it could create more that could survive? That's kind of the opposite of what you would originally believe. If the mother or father can survive because they had smaller beaks, and the their offspring could survive. Is that not kind of bad for the creation? However, Charles Darwin, in his ludicrous notion, he looked at these beaks and he said, well, this must prove that everything is interrelated. You can see that that is a serious leap of logic, and it's not logic. It's illogical. And yet, and yet people believed him because they wanted to believe him because... Actually, originally people didn't want to believe him because uh, in Britain that time it was very Christian. Everyone believed in the Holy Bible. It was mandated by the church, the Anglican Church of the Church of England. And no, yeah, they re originally they didn't want to believe him, but they succumbed to facts. They don't like the alternative. So what we're going to be showing you in this video series is things like that. We're going to show you the leaps of logic, the pure fantasy and imagination of the evolutionists uh, that is incompatible with reality, which is exactly what happened with Darwin's finches. And look them up, Darwin's finches, and read about what these evolutionists are saying, and you will simply laugh. You have to laugh at how ridiculous it is. Actually, I, I'm doing the opposite. I'm actually compelled to believe in it. So, I also want to talk about some of the philosophical implications. Before the, this video... There are no philosophical implications of evolution at all. It's not a religion, it's not a philosophy, it's not a belief system. It's a fact that helps us discover origins. And the following videos get extremely scientific in nature. I want the scientific in nature, because there's no philo philosophical implications at all about evolutionary theory. I want to, to just start with uh, philosophical foundations. We're going to talk about, if you contour to the evolutionary worldview, what are the implications for you? Evolution is not a worldview, it's not a religion, it's not a philosophy. Listen, Sean, it's not a belief system. It's a, uh, it's a fact. How are you going to look at life differently if you believe that? So I'm a Christian. I, I believe what you believe, Sean. The only thing we d diverge on is, is creation and evolution. Uh, evolution is like to say, this is a That's purely right. scientific theory. There is no philosophical ramifications to it. It is not a philosophy. Well, yes, it is, because Prove it. by believing in evolution, you make certain uh, assumptions, you make certain uh, finalities, consequences. There are consequences to believing it, which, which changes the way you look at people, the way you look at the world, the way you look at the purpose and reason to your existence. In the not at all. I, I believe the purpose that you believe in, Sean. I'm a Christian. I mean, yes, many evolutionary atheists, sure. Uh, but not to an extremity of a philosophy. Their philosophy is atheism. The existence of your fellow man. So I want to show you what you do believe if you believe in evolution. Okay. Try not to tell us what we believe. Tell us what you believe and try to disprove what we believe. And, you know, study up on it. 
If you believe in evolution, you do not believe that life was created with a purpose or a design by something that created it with a purpose or a design or a reason for its existence. So you'll find many evolutionists say, what is the meaning to life? And they say, I make the meaning for my life. I don't know many people who say that. Uh, many, I know many atheists that actually use the Bible as a moral code because it's a good moral code, like the Ten Commandments. They don't all say that, Sean. Maybe some, sure. But I don't. All right, next video to come. Thanks for watching.